It's always good to be back in what we call our home church. Amen. Praise God. And I just enjoy every song and every testimony, every word that was spoken here this morning. God is good, and he's good to all of us. And I mean, that song Sister Sandra sung, praise God, don't give up today. Praise God, hold on tomorrow. Praise God. Help is on its way. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you got your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Corinthians and the ninth chapter. 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. And while you're turning there, I'm going to read something real quick to you in 2 Peter verse 15 and 16. So you find Corinthians, and I'm going to catch up with you in just a minute there. So here's Peter talking, and this is what he said. 2 Peter 3 and 15, he said, An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. You know, and, and they are a lot of things that Paul wrote that is hard to be understand, understood. But on the other hand, praise God, there's a lot that we can read and we understand. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And that's what the Lord is going to help me with today. Something that I felt like the Lord, I felt like the Lord spoke this to me. I mean, it was, a, a, it was just something spoke to me. I'll just say it to you that way. When we were in Montana, here in uh, 1 Corinthians 9 and 10, and this one verse here, in the ninth chapter, verse 23... Um, no, the ninth chapter, verse 27. Okay, Paul said this. He said, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Now, Brother Hayes had asked me about preaching one of those services up there, but I feel led to do it, and I said no. And so, but this scripture came to me, and I think it was the next day day it came to me again but i keep under my body and bring it into subjection lest by any means when i have preached to others i myself should be a castaway the second day the second time that i got this i said god you're speaking to me i feel like lord that you're you're talking to me so i'm going to back up here in the 24th verse this is paul's teaching he said know ye not that they which run in a race run all But one receiveth the prize, so run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I not as one that beateth the air. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. So Paul was talking to these people, and he was telling them, look, you know, there's these races out here, and a lot of people, they get in these races. But he said that one receiveth the prize. How many's ever been in a race? You know, one time I was in a race, and I'll tell you, I was little and I was fast, and man, could I run. (laughs) And I forget how far we was running in this race, but we took off. And I wanted to win. So did the rest of the girls that was running there. And, you know, I I kept on running. And finally I realized somewhere down that road that, hey, I was ahead of all of them because I turned around to look. But, you know, I kept running and kept running. And never now and then I'd look back just to see if anybody was even close to me. But praise God, I won. Well, that was just a race in school. You know, kids running. And did I feel good? But listen, he said, so they all, one is going to receive that price, so run that you may obtain. Now, he's talking about another race when he says that. All of you run that you may obtain. He said, and every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now, they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. You know, you look out here and you see these runners that are really runners, And, you know, they just don't decide one day that I'm going to get in this race and I'm going to run and I'm going to beat everybody in this race. They didn't do that. 
They had their eye on a prize. They had their eye on a, a big race that was coming up. And um, you know how maybe the Olympics, maybe they thought that maybe that was their dream. One day I'm going to be in the Olympics and I am going to run that race and I am going to win that race. So knowing that that race was coming up, do you think that those people just said, well, you know, when the time comes, I'm nothing to worry about. I'm going to win that race. No, they didn't. You know what they'd done? The ones that were smart, the winners, this is what they'd done. They would get up and they would run probably every day, I would say. If not every day, probably every other day. But they had their, their eyes on that prize, that gold medal that was going to be given away there at the Olympics. And they wanted that. They didn't want the, the, what is it, the one they give before they give three, the bronze and silver. I don't want the bronze and I don't want the silver. I want that gold prize. Amen. I want that gold medal. And you know what I'm going to do? I am going to work and I'm going to strive. I'm going to get up in the morning and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my running shoes on and I'm going to hit that track. If it's hot, I'm going to run. If it's cold, I'm going to run. If it's raining, I'm going to run. I am going to win. Win that prize and you know what somebody wins that prize but there's only one winner but he said they do this to to win a crown that is incorruptible I mean that is corruptible in other words that is going to be done away with someday but there is a crown of life that's going to be given to somebody in a race and this race that we're running praise God we are going to, if we win we are going to get an incorruptible crown hallelujah he said so I therefore run not as uncertainty I know what I'm running for See, a lot of people, they don't even know what church is about. They don't know what, to, uh, what they're even doing. They don't even know what, a lot of times, what's even going on. You know, sometimes we've seen people just come into church and, you know, it looked like, I mean, they was maybe combing their hair, coming in the door, tying their shoe. They in such a hurry, maybe eating a bowl of cereal, you know, making it to la at the last minute. You know what I'm saying? But I'm telling you what, when the fire of God is in you and you want to know what it's all about, praise God, your hair is going to be combed, your shoes is going to be tied, that bowl of cereal is not going to matter what's going to matter. You're going to get there and you're going to praise and worship God. Amen. Praise God. And he said, so I fight not as one that beateth the air. You know, a lot of people, they are just beating the air. Praise God. It reminds me what that lawyer, I mean, what that judge told that man one time that we was in court with. I won't say it, but I'm telling you what, they are a lot of people. They're out there, and that's all they're doing. They're just beating the air. But Paul said, I'm not one of them. I know what I'm doing. I know what this race is that I'm running in. But, somebody say, but, I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. Now, I won't come back to this. We're going to come back to this. But we're going to go on to this next chapter a little bit. This is going to be good. When I get to the end of this message, I believe that we're going to be shouting and praising God. Amen. So he said, moreover, or in other words, also, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant. See, a lot of people in the race, they were just ignorant. Paul was warning them you can't be ignorant. How that all, he was wanting to tell them something. He was wanting to remind them how that all of our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat. And did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. You know, praise God, he lets it rain on the just, and he lets it rain on the unjust. Hallelujah. Praise God, I've been in meetings where the power of God was moving and working. And, and it, you know, a lot of people, anybody in that meeting, I'm telling you, they felt the presence of God. They might have been saved, they might have been backslid, they might have been where they needed to be with the Lord, but there was such anointing in there that everybody, praise God, felt that spirit. Everybody felt that anointing. And that's the way it was when they were there in the wilderness. That rock followed them and that rock was Christ. So they all drank the same spiritual drink. But with many of them, God was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. These were those probably that was beating the air. 
They were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people they sat down to eat and drink and they rose up to play. I believe right here in this scripture, Paul was telling us, he was warning us. You know, a lot of people don't like the Old Testament, but I'm going to tell you something about it. If you want to know how God deals with people, go back because that's what Paul is telling these people. You need to look back at what happened to these people and let this be an example to you what's coming your way. Amen. Praise God so he put that in there for us to know he said don't be like them he said you know they they sat down they to eat and drink and rose up to play you remember when Moses went up into the mountain to get the word from God and how those people they were there eating and drinking and playing and they got you know they made Aaron make them a, a, a God but you know that's what they were doing eating and drinking and playing that's what 90% of church people are doing today they are eating Eating and drinking and they are playing church. They're not serious about nothing. That's true. They're not serious about anything. But thank God for the 10% or whatever the percentage is. They are real. They have got their eyes on a prize. They've got their eye on that crown of life. Hallelujah. That nothing, once they get it, once they attain to that, it will never be taken away from them. And they have got their eyes upon that. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to hold on today because they know victory's coming tomorrow. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to say to you today, if you're down and out today, just hold on. Keep on praying keep on pressing this is a pressing way we got to keep pressing and you will never win a race if you give up praise God you know one time I was in another race they had all the different kids from the counties meet out at, I think it was at the state park or somewhere but we all met at this particular pl place and we'd all practice these th uh, games that we were going to enter in these races and I was in this race for jumping the rope and listen there again, I mean, I could do it. But the, listen, even then, there was uh, favoritism in the schools. They didn't want me to win. They didn't want me to be in the race. They wanted this other girl to be in this race. But listen, they put me in it because I won the race at the school I was going to. They really wanted her to win it. And I think about three times I had to go up because we done a, went up against the others, but three times I went up against this one girl. They was the teacher there that wanted her to win. But I won that one, but that wasn't the real, that wasn't the real game. But you know, I got on out there and we begin to jump rope, and I jumped, and I jumped, and I jumped. And you know, I would see this one mess up, and I would see that one. But you know, I kept on jumping, hallelujah. And I kept on, you know, after a while, I began to get tired, and I began to get hot. And then, you know, it wasn't long till there was like three of us, you know, and I kept on. And then there was two. And you know, that second one that was left, she made a mistake. Oh, glory be to God. And I just kept on jumping. And I don't know, not much longer, but I won. You see what we got to be determined that we are going to win. And that's what God has got. God has got winners. He doesn't have losers. I'm going to tell you, we are in a fight. We're in a race today, and we are not going to lose if we just hold on and keep on. Hallelujah. Don't be playing. Don't play. This is nothing to play about. Amen. This is real. He said, neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and 20,000. You think that there's not judgment coming? I mean, Paul is telling people, look back. This is an example to you. He said, neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed as serpents. Neither mummer ye as some of them also mummered and were destroyed of the destroyer. Do we never say a word that God doesn't hear? And not only that, when we complain and mummer, you know, people get tired of listening to us. Sometimes you just say, why don't you, you're thinking, why don't you just shut up? I'm tired of hearing it. But listen, you know, the Lord hears it all and you don't even have to speak it. It could just be down in your heart that you're mummering and complaining. It could be in the heart and God hears that thought that's in that heart. Amen. So they mummered and they complained. 
But God sent servants and he sent the destroyer to destroy them. Now listen what Paul said. Now all these things happened unto them for examples. That's an example. What happened to them? And they are written for our admonition. They are written for our warning. Praise God. This is specifically put here in this chapter, in this verse, to warn the people of God today. Praise God. that He said, upon the whom's of the end of the world are come. And I believe that's us. I believe, praise God, that that is us. He said, but look. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. When you start grumbling and complaining, the next time you're going through a trial, think about that. Think about, look, this is nothing. What did, did uh, James say? He said, think it not strange concerning the fiery darts, you know, as though some strange things is going to happen to you. No, it's happened to everybody. So the next time before you complain, the next time before you murmur, I'll tell you what we need to do. i got these little mirrors back there, and, you know, I take that little mirror, and when I look in that mirror, I can't see nothing but my face and you know what we need to do we need to just carry a mirror with us and the next time you know we, we be, want to complain when we want to look at what somebody else is doing we want to look at somebody else's fault we want to look at somebody else's failure let's take that little mirror and stick it in our face and I promise we won't see nothing but our own mistakes and failures amen so there's no temptation taking you as, but, as such as common to man. Everything that we're going through, somebody else has went through that. Yes. Every heartache, every disappointment, ever hurt, ever sickness, somebody has walked in those shoes. Amen. You know, this is not something strange that's happened to us. But he said, there hath no temptation taken you as but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. Glory to God. God is faithful. People are not faithful, but God is faithful, and he will not. Somebody say, will not. He will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Boy, I'm telling you, that was a good message he preached to them, and I understand it. I get it. Him and get it. Praise God, I get this message. Now, going back to verse 27 there in the ninth chapter, he said, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. You remember what he wrote in Romans 12, 1 and 2? This is what he said. He said, I beseech you, brethren. He, and he, in other words, I beg you. That's what that word means. I beg you. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, by the mercies of God, I'm begging you to present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And he said, be not conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? That you may be able to prove what is that good, did somebody say good, good, acceptable, acceptable, and perfect will of God. And that's what he was talking about here when he was talking about having his body under subjection. You know what he was saying? I'm going to present this body a living sacrifice. It's going to be holy. It's got to be holy. It's got to be one that God will accept. You know, God doesn't just accept anything. Now, people say come Come as you are, and that's the truth. But when you really come to God, you don't leave there like you came in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I said you don't leave there like you came. When you leave, when you first come to God and you really come to God and you give your heart to God, you're, uh, there's a change. And that change is immediate. There's something that immediately takes place in you. Praise God. You don't leave as you are. If you came to him a liar, you don't leave a liar. Amen. If we came a drunk, a cheat, a murderer, complainer, you know, complaining, God hates that just as much as he hates a thief. Yeah. He hates somebody complaining and griping as much as he hates somebody out here stealing or drinking or all the things that we say is so bad. God hates that, the murmurs and the complainers. 
But when you come to God, he will change that complaining heart. We just got to do what Paul said. So Paul knew. Listen to this. Paul was a preacher's preacher. I mean, he preached... And he preached to simple people like me. Thank God he did. So I can under, I understand this. Thank God I understand this. But listen, you think about him, all that he did. You know, he, he was a preacher, and he went through more than I believe any of the other apostles from what I read. You know, I know they were bold. Uh, John was bold and all, and Peter, they say, was hung upside down and stuff. But uh, Paul, before he went to that chop block, all the things that he went through. I mean, you think about some of the things and the sufferings you can read about where he wrote. But listen, and all the people that he helped and all the miracles, you know, there was miracles wrought, you know, by Paul and how God moved with him and God spoke to him and God was with him. But listen, he wondered and he knew that if he didn't walk the way the Lord intended for him to walk, that he could preach to everybody and be a castaway. That was what I believe the Lord was telling me. You have got to get your flesh under subjection. You have got to present your body a living sacrifice. It's got to be holy and it's got to be one that God's going to accept. We got to renew this mind. He said, you renew your, your mind. You renew your mind. That way, if you will renew that mind, you can prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. That's what Paul was talking about. But he said, hey, look, that lets us know if Paul thought that, you know, what about me? I look in that mirror, where am I at? And I'll tell you. I'm ashamed. Praise God. I, I said, I'm ashamed. When I look in that mirror and see my life, I can't see nobody else's faults. I can't see nobody else's favor because I see too much of my own. Now listen to this. Turn with me. I want you to take a look at this in your Bible here. Second Timothy, the fourth chapter. We're still talking about Paul here now. Paul, you know, wanting to keep his body under subjection. That after all he'd done, all the preaching, that he wouldn't be a castaway. Now listen, <clears throat> Paul here in this fourth chapter, he's preaching to Timothy. You know, sometimes there may not be but one preacher that, I mean, one person you're going to preach to. Brother David, how many messages have you preached to me over the years? It was just me and you. Yes. Or Brother Hayes, how many times have you preached to me over the years? It was just you and I. Yes. And we'd be going down the road and you would preach to me. <laughs> Praise God. I mean, you think about it, the words that was given to me. And you know what? I don't forget it. A lot of people that God has used to give me a word over the years, there's been people and a lot of people, I don't know where they was at in God. It's none of my business where they were at in God. But God used them to speak to me. God used them to warn me. And I thank God for those. But here Paul is now. He's preaching to Timothy. And this is what his message was to Timothy. He said, I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. What he was saying, Timothy, don't hold back nothing. Don't hold back. Think about this. Reprove. Rebuke. How many times has God used somebody to bring forth a message and you know it was rebuking you? Me, I know a lot of times. But then how about all those times, hallelujah, that somebody God sent to exhort me. Praise God. You think about it. So, in other words, he was saying, Timothy, you got to do your job. Praise God. He said, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Lord, churches are full of that today. My Lord, they don't want a man of God. They're not going to have a man of God. They're not going to have somebody anointed of God. They're not going to have it. But they're going to have somebody that's going to, they're going to pay them to say what they want to say, which is really nothing but a bunch of foolishness, you know what I mean? 
But anyway, they're, they're not going to have sound doctrine. Listen, if you're anointed of God, you're called to preach. You might as well settle it in your heart. Praise God that the world is not going to hear you. They're not going to have you. But remember I said out of about 100, there's a 10% that will. And you know what? That 10% are out there and they're looking and they're starving for a word, a real word from God. You know, when this, the last night of that meeting there in Montana, there was a, a preacher, I mean, not a preacher, a man and his wife. How many uh, miles is it from Browning to Billings? About how many miles or hours do they drive to come? Now you think about this, they, that's, that's how far these people drive to be in these meetings, okay? Plus they pay a motel, plus they pay their food. They want to be there, but the last night, the service was just about, Brother Hayes was ending the service and he wanted to say something. And he said something, these are not exact words, because I don't have that m mind that tells you exactly, but this is what he said and to sum it up. He, he said, I... I Thank God, I appreciate Brother and Sister Hayes for coming. When they come, he said, we understand what they're saying. Isn't that what he said? And so, you know what he was saying? There's a lot of preachers come through here. We don't even know what they're talking about. How many times have you been in a service, and we've had some of them come through here. Some of them have been in here, and I'm thinking, what are you talking about? But you know, somebody can get up with the anointing of God and may not say a whole lot, but I knew exactly what they were saying. They might have been reproving me. They might have been rebuking me. They might have been exhorting me, but I got it. Yes. Praise God. And I thank God for those that he sends. Amen. I thank God for his pastors. So Paul was encouraging Timothy, look, Timothy, you got to do it. God is depending on you. You've got to do it, Timothy. And he was telling him, look, you know, you've got to be in season, out of season. You've got to do this because the time's coming when they're not going to endure sound doctrine. He said, after their own lust shall they heap up to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. You know what a fable is? just an old story. How many times have you sat back there and listened to somebody tell a story and you're thinking, why don't you just hush or bring forth the word? And I know you're laughing, but listen, I'm just being honest with you. I'm being honest with you. Uh, there was a woman minister one time, and some of you know her. I'm not going to call her name, but anyway, she was in this place. They'd called her to come for revival. And, and so before she got up to minister, there was somebody, another supposed to be minister got up to testify and he went on and on and on and kept on so finally a man I think he stood up told him to sit down and let the servant of the Lord speak in other words I've heard enough amen <laughs> praise God but they're hearing fables and listen you have got to have uh, the right diet if you're going to be healthy You've got to eat a healthy diet. That's just no other way to it. And that's the way it is with our walk with the Lord. If we are going to be a mature Christian to get to that place, we got to grow. we got to have growth. But we can't eat just anything. We have got to eat the Word of God. Amen. So we can't be, we can't be turned into fa oh, into fables just because the other people like it. Just because they got to have somebody up there joking all the time. We don't want that. Praise God. We are running a race. But he said, watch in all things. He said, Timothy, endure afflictions. Look at somebody and say, endure afflictions. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. What did Brother Hayes say he's going to preach maybe next weekend about evangelism? Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. What did Paul say? You know, uh, to uh, renew your mind, that you can prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. You got to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And that's what Paul was telling Timothy. Make full proof of thy ministry. He said, For 
I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. This is Paul. He said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Praise God. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all of them also that love his appearing. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise God. So here was a man that had been through a lot of things, but he knew that he had to bring that body, that flesh, under subjection. He knew that he had to present this body a living sacrifice, one that was holy, one that was acceptable unto the Lord, that he could prove what was that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And the way he did that, he said, you know, you got to do it by renewing your mind. Praise God. And so, thank God today, we're in a race. Praise God. You're looking at a winner. Look at somebody and say, hey, you're looking at a winner. <laughs> I'm going to stay in this race. Praise God. I'm going to stay in the race with the help of the Lord. And praise God, if you see me, what is that song Deanna sings? If you see your brother falling by the way, come and say, hey, you're going the wrong way. God send a Timothy to me. God send Timothy to me to reprove, rebuke, but let him exhort me, God. Let him put enough of a word in me, God, that's going to help me along this way because I've got my eyes today on that prize. I know the Lord was speaking to me. He was telling me, look, this is what you got to do. And you know, there's one place that says to make your calling and your election sure. Praise God. So I am so full of joy today. Praise God. I'm full of joy today to know. Praise God that we're in a race. But if we do what the Word of God says, we're winners. Amen. We're winners. You know, sometimes we go through these trials and the devil will tell you, why don't you just sit down? Give up. Be quiet. Nobody wants to hear you anyway. Praise God. Or, you know, you, you can't do that. You're not qualified. You're not this. You're not that. But you know when the devil tells me all of what I'm not? And I listen to a while. But then I know one thing that I am. I am a child of the living God. Hallelujah. You know, I am one of those plants that the Heavenly Father planted. I know that. So I know that there may be a lot of things I'm not. You know, I've been a failure. You know, I've, you know, just been discouraged at so many times. But thank God. You're going to have to sing that song again and again and again when you come to church. Because I'm not going to give up. Amen. Praise God. I'm not going to quit. I know what is set before me. Amen. I know there's a race. And I'm going to run. Amen. And I'm going to run my last mile home. Amen. Praise God. And you know my mother used to sing a song, 99 and a half won't do. Praise God. She said, I'm running. Trying to make a hundred because 99 and a half is not going to do. Praise God. So how many going to stay in the race? Praise God. And that's what Paul did. He said, you know, the time for my departure's hand. But he said, I fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. And he said, henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Glory to God. Give the Lord a hand this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So anyway, like I, he said, we're glad to be back. Now, Wednesday afternoon at 5 o'clock, we're going to have a prayer meeting here. 5 o'clock, Wednesday afternoon. We're not coming here to uh, gossip. We're not coming here to complain. We're not coming in here to talk about anybody. We are coming in here to pray. And you know, the Lord wants us to pray there's times that God sent people up in the mountains, sent them down wherever to pray and get along with God. But there was times that there was a corporate prayer that the people were called together 
to come together and pray together. And that's what this is going to be. This is going to be a corporate prayer. If you want to come, you're welcome. Praise God. We are going to be here, Lord willing, at 5 o'clock Wednesday afternoon. And we're going to come together and we're going to pray. Amen. Praise God. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Praise God. So we, we just need, I feel like we need to have a, um, a prayer meeting together, a corporate prayer meeting. Amen. So that's what we're going to do Wednesday afternoon at 5 o'clock, Lord willing. And uh, does anybody have anything you want to say? Praise God. Well, you know, when the Lord, I feel like the Lord spoke that to me when he did. But I could just see myself with that mirror. I mean, I could actually, in my mind, see myself with my mirror looking at my face. And, and knowing I can't see nobody else's but my own. And you know what I've got to do? I've got to keep my eyes, and I am. I want my eyes, you know, uh, like the song was singing this morning, keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on him. Keep your eyes up on that price because things are going to come. You know, you see these, ra these runners out in these race tracks running, and, you know, you'll hear the people up in the bleachers a lot of time yelling at them. Mm -hmm. Praise God. But, you know, those that are determined they're going to win, they're not listening to what they're up there saying. They're not listening to that distraction. You know, if you listen to that, the devil will use somebody to distract you, to get your mind off of the prize, to get your mind off of that race, and you'll wind up losing. Amen. But if you don't listen to those voices out there, praise God, don't listen to these voices. <laughs> listen to that one voice, that word that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Praise God. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Okay, let's stand. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your word today, your spirit. Thank you for every song, the music, Lord. We just thank you, God, for it all. You're, oh, you're so good to us, God. Thank you, Lord, for everyone that's here today. Bless them. God, help us to stay in this race that we can one day be like Paul. We can say, I fought a good fight. I kept the faith, Lord. And know that that crown of righteousness, Lord, is laid up for us. I ask you, Lord, today to bless your people here. Lord, I pray today, God, that you would encourage them. God, that you would strengthen us today, Lord, and help us, God, to run this race, God, determined, God, that we're going for the gold. Hallelujah. We're going to go for the gold. Hallelujah. We're going to make it. We're going to win it. In Jesus' name, you're dismissed. If you want to give something, bring it up here. Put it in the offering. Thank you.